There came a time in my life where I, where I had to say something that I've never ever said in my life. There came a time in my life where I was so desperate for change, tired of the demonic things that were going on in my life. And I had to say these words to Jesus. I had to say, set me free. Yes. Set me free, Jesus. Set me free from the drugs. Set me free from the anger. Set me free from the spirit of murder. Set me free from the lust. Set me free, God. Because I cannot do it on my own. Can you guys do this with me? And then those of you guys that I was talking about that you were contemplating suicide, I know God has already been speaking to you. Let him keep speaking to you. He's going to continue to reveal himself to you. But let's all do this. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Set, me free. set me free. Jesus, Jesus. Set, me free. set me free. You just set yourself up. I hope you know you just set yourself up for breakthrough. I hope you know that you just spoke something into existence. I hope you know that you just tapped into something that you've been wanting your whole life, but you didn't know how to find it. You didn't know where it was. You thought it was in the neighborhood. You thought it was in the club. You thought it was in a relationship. But Jesus said, no, it's in me because I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. If you were somebody that was contemplating suicide, would you lift up your hand so I could see you? Would you lift up your hand so I could see you? I see one, I see two, I see three. Anybody else, four, I see five. Anybody else, you were contemplating suicide, six. I can't see everybody, but I, church, you got to understand this, that there's people sitting right next to you that are broken, that are hurting, that will literally are contemplating to kill themselves. No matter what they look like, no matter how well it seems like their life is going or how obviously bad it's going, church, we got to wake up and we got to look around us because people desperately, desperately need you. You're the salt, you're the light, they need you. Your neighborhood needs you, your family needs you. Your, your, your person on the left, on the right, that's sitting right next to you, they need you way more than you think they need you. Christianity is not about us staying in our comfort zones, right? I mean, you guys all know the Great Commission and for those that don't, we're called to go out there and make disciples and baptize them in the name of Jesus. That's what we're called to do. And if someone's hurting near me, I want to know. But how are you going to ever know if they're hurting if you never take time to ask them? They're hurting all around us. They're hurting all around us. It might be suicide for one person, but it might be a whole other thing for someone else. But the work, the harvest is right here. There's people in need all over the world. But how about we focus on the ones right next to us, in our homes, in our families, and in our communities. I believe that right now God is passing on a conviction and an urgency for the people that are around you. I'm just flowing worship team, so I mean, you guys can stay up here and hang out with me for a little bit. And if you guys want to sit down, you guys can sit down. My, my title for this message is called, Set Me Free. Set Me Free. I've been studying on a whole different 
topic because we're in a, the book of Matthew f- chapter 5 and I was going to talk about we are the salt. And then next thing you know, God's like, no, three hours later before this service, he said no. And he gave me visions of people getting delivered and set free. And this might scare some of you, but he gave me visions of people getting demons casted out of them. Because there's such thing as demonic oppression, there's such thing as demons. But there's also such thing as the power of Jesus Christ that has authority over all those things. I just want you guys to understand a, a, just a simple, simple thing. I'm not the greatest teacher, but I just like things simple. The simplicity of it is this, is that God desperately loves you so so much. God loves you. And I feel like there's some of us that we hear that many times, but it goes right here, but it doesn't hit here in your heart. Like, do you understand how important and how valuable you are to God? Do you understand that, that your circumstance that you're in does not have anything to do with God's love for you? It's called life. Do you understand that God will go to crazy extents and limits just to go and reach you? Crazy lengths to reach you? That he would give up Jesus Christ, his son, and say, I want him, I want her to be in heaven with me forever. If I got to sacrifice my one and only son for you, I'll do it because I love you that much. This isn't a love that your mom or your dad gave you or didn't give you. This is a love beyond every person in this room. Pretty hard to, to wrap our minds around it, but it's true. That unconditional, unfailing love is available for you tonight. And God... He loves you so much, and there, but he wants us to do a few things tonight. The first thing is recognize. Recognize where, where it is that you need freedom. Recognize, God, where is it that I need freedom in my life? I don't care if you're a minister, a leader, I don't care what you are. Everybody, this is for you. This is for the church leaders, the volunteers, the the person that's not even a Christian yet. This is for everybody. Examine yourself. Look in the mirror and see, God, where is it that I need some freedom? Psalms 139, 23 through 24, it says, search me. Search me. Not search my neighbor. Not search my leader. Not search my disciples. Not search my wife. God, search me. It's called ownership. David's taking ownership in this in, in Psalms. Search me. Oh God, and know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. I mean, just with the anxious thoughts, sometimes we don't realize that that leads you into a lot of sinful places. Sometimes we don't realize that those things, those anxious thoughts, no matter how small you think they are, how overwhelmed you are, take those to God right away before it bursts into sin in your life. He says, point out anything in me. He's taking ownership, not pointing out anything in anybody else. Point it out in me, God. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. You see, what David is doing is this is a man after God's heart right here. This is a guy that he's not just trying to play church or impress someone or just trying to follow a a religion or something. This is somebody that actually loves God. 
And if, if, you're, if you're in a position right now where you're wondering, man, do I love God? I'll ask you this. Do you have these conversations with God? Because this is a conversation of repentance right here. This is leading him into a place of repentance right here. You can't repent of things that you don't know need, you need to repent of. And there are some things that are very obvious in our life that it's like, dude, you need to repent of that. But then there are some other things that you don't realize right away. You guys, you guys could, you guys could sit down if you guys want. But can I keep you? I'll keep, I'm going to keep him. Feel free to come up whenever you want though. We're ready. Give our worship team a hand. They might be up in one minute, you don't know. They might be up in 10 minutes, you don't know. They're great. We have probably the best worship team in the whole world. I'm just going to say that. Man. We're talking about examining ourselves. For those that don't know me, my name is Gabriel. I'm one of the pastors here and my wife, Abriana, and we have our, our awesome son, Xander. Yeah, yeah. He's clapping right now. He's literally clapping. Good job, Papa. He loves to worship too. He's probably going to be a great singer like me. Or his mom, but. You know, we're talking about taking that self-inventory and, and recognizing where we need that freedom in our life. You know, I, I, I remember there was a, a time where I was at Pastor Marco's house and I was hanging out and I had this thing brewing inside of me. And at some point, I'm just like, man, I just got to tell Pastor Marco something. For those of you that don't know, he's my father-in-law. And I'm like, I got to just tell him because he obviously don't see it. You guys are like, he's crazy. <laughs> Pastor Marco going to cast that demon right out of me. No, but so I remember he's walking up the stairs in the house, going to his room. And... I just bring up a situation that, and, and, and basically what happened was I was offended with the leader. I get, I, I mean, I'm human, like, come on. <laughs> and, and I was offended and I, and I was like, what that person is doing is not right. Pastor Marco, don't you see it? I know some of you might've thought that, but I actually said it. <laughs> I'll tell you how I went. <laughs> and he's walking up and I'm like, they did this, they did that, they did that, come on, like. And he said, oh. He's like, oh, so, so it's your job to do that. Oh, so you wanna be the pastor and you wanna, oh, so you're leading them now. And like he said it very, you know how he could get like very f straight. And I was at the bottom of the staircase like, oh, nah, don't turn around and come back down here and talk. I was like hoping it would be like one of those like casual combos and just you keep going and we're good. And then I realized later, man, I got away with that. But, and he said, you know what's your problem, Gabriel? I'm like, oh my gosh, he, he's never told me stuff like that. I'm like, okay, boy, let's hear it. He said, what that person is doing or what that person is saying has jacked you up so much that you're not even yourself right now. And I'm just like, he said, you know, Gabriel, all the years that I've known you, you've always been talking about vision after vision. You've always been a man of such vision and speaking so much vision constantly all the years that I've known you. But now that person has your vision. And now what you're talking about is that person because you're offended, you have the spirit of offense in your, in your life operating and you have bitterness operating. What do you guys think I did after that? I ran, bro. No, I was kidding. I ran. I was like, man, you ain't going to pray for me. No, I was kidding. I had to hop out of there real quick. What happened was this. I got instantly delivered. And I operate in deliverance for the last nine years. Sometimes, yeah, there are people coughing demons out and manifesting, that's all real. But this one was different. What happened was God just set me free and I remember thinking, 
And I looked at him like, wait, what, what just happened? I just, did I just get delivered or something? And he said, he was all laughing, like how he laughs like that, like, <laughs> and then, and he's like, <laughs> you, yeah, you probably, you probably did. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I just got delivered. And he didn't even have to pray for me. He just had to, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Give me the truth real quick. Because the Bible says that the truth will set you free. That's why you need some people in your life that will tell you the truth no matter what. You, you think Pastor Marco sugarcoats things with me because I'm his son-in-law. You're, you're wrong. Pastor Marco is Pastor Marco on the stage at home, wherever he is. He's keeping it 100% with you. And you need people like that around your life. If you hang out with people that are not real with you, when you're hanging out with them, you got to get some new friends. Sorry. But I was able to recognize... In other words, I got a revel I got revelation. I understood something I didn't understand before. I was like, whoa, you're right. I, I haven't talked about any vision to you, huh? No. Man, this stuff got me all messed up. And next you know, I was able to receive that freedom. So I want you guys too. I believe God has already been bringing stuff up to you this whole, this whole time. This whole time we've been worshiping, maybe even since the morning. God's been bringing stuff up in your spirit through conversation with people. For some reason, you've been finding yourself opening up to people today. God's already on the move in your life to set you free. Can I tell you something? The only thing that will stop that move of God from happening is if you choose to keep your hard heart. I mean, I've seen God do crazy miracles crazy miracles but you know that when Jesus went to his hometown he couldn't perform any miracles why because the people their faith they didn't have faith what happens when you don't have faith in God and when you doubt God you have a hard heart God's saying let me soften that hard heart let me open up, let me do some spiritual surgery in your life. So where is it that you need freedom? And if you're taking notes, start jotting some things down. Write some things down. I need freedom in this. I need, some, like I said, some of you guys, you already know. This is your night. The, my, my, my second point, two things that we want to do tonight. My second point is surrender fully to God. Like, go all out for Jesus. Do you know that that means that I, I hold nothing back? Like, I have, I, I have a, a power of 12 and guys that I disciple. Man, we go all out. Like, if we were a gang, we'd probably be the most dangerous gang in the whole city. I'm serious. Like, low key. Because I got some ex-goons with me and all kinds of stuff. Like, but... And they don't do no sissy stuff. They came from the streets. So they're like, let's go 100%. Let's go grab guys out of the bar and let's go, go blah, blah, blah. And my guys are right now, we're plotting and planning to go to baseline at 10 o'clock at night to go and just see what happens. <laughs> Some of my guys, I was like, bro, you're going to get arrested for sure. You're going to get arrested for sure because you're all tatted over. You know, they're going to be like, what are you doing? But we're going all out. There is no, um, I'll go, what, what's the schedule? There is no, what, what time does class um, starting at the way start? Or, uh, we not have this, man. When I knew that I was in a season where I had to be focused because my life depended on it. Do you know how many family gatherings I canceled? It's so quiet. I don't know why. Do you know how many family gatherings I canceled going to? Family's going to Vegas for, for Christmas or whatever. I don't know why they went there for um, Christmas, but hey. But wherever it is that they were going or doing, I wasn't there. Why? Because I don't love my family? No, I love my family. They're coming to the Lord one by one. I love them. I pray for them. But this is the thing. I knew through God's grace 
that if I don't get myself right, if I don't put myself in a spiritual boot camp, if I don't start putting boundaries around my life, I'm going to fall back into the old life that I didn't even want to be in in the first place. And we have to really look at how the devil works. Sometimes he's not coming like, for those of you that know my story, I mean, I was addicted to cocaine. If I pass by someone doing cocaine, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, bro, get that away from me, bro. Watch out. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good on that. I don't have a desire for it. I mean, God set me free through his love and through his grace. And, and when I got saved, within a few months, I got set free from cocaine. I didn't go back to it. But this is the thing. He's not going to get me like that. He's going to get me trying to be a comfortable Christian. And he's going to try to get me to start um, saying no to things that God's offering me, like discipleship. He's going to start getting me to say no to things that God's offering me, like coming to service. He's going to get me to say no to things that God's offering me, like anger management class or whatever, because I needed it at that time. He, that's how he, he works. Don't underestimate the opponent that's standing in front of you. That's the quickest way to get knocked out is that you think that this dude, and, that's, and, and I'm not trying to brag, but people always thought like, that guy, man, I'll, man, I'll beat him up. Because I don't look like no thug or nothing. I look like an easy fight, like, right? I'll tell you this much. I never had someone saying, no, I don't want to fight you, bro. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I'll be getting packed out after, though, because I beat him up one-on-one. -on -one. You see, this is the thing. You, don't, you cannot underestimate any tactic of the devil. And don't get offended when your leader or your pastor is calling you on something and, and putting you in check. You might need to be put in check for your own good. You know how many moms and, and grandmas and stuff will come to us and say, thank you so much for putting him in check. Because they know you. They know how, how you are. And they know you need a coach, a man of God that's going to take you under his wing, a woman of God that's going to take you under her wing, and that's going to disciple you, that's going to love you, that's not going to put up with all the sissy stuff, that's going to call it straight, that's going to say no. Are you going 100% or 0% because that's all that it is? If you ever thought you were going 90% for Jesus Christ, I'm sorry to tell you, you were only pushing 0%. Because Jesus does not take second place. He's only, he's either first or he's nothing. I'm just saying, if we really want to take over a city like San Bernardino, we need some Christians that are like, like gangster Christians. Watch when you guys see my P12 in three months, when I have a thousand disciples under my wing, that we're discipling, that we're doing some crazy stuff that scares you. You're going to be like, oh my gosh. And I pray that it inspires you to let you know that God could use anybody. It doesn't matter what credentials you have. It doesn't matter if you went to a Bible college or not. It don't matter what your start was because Jesus will have the last word in your life right now and in the finish. Get a, get a mentor. So surrender fully to God, James 4, 7. It says, so submit to the authority of God. Man, that word authority, that word authority. You will never walk in power if you choose to not submit to the authority of God. You cannot walk in power you're not willing to submit to. The authority of, of Christ, he wants you to walk in it. What we're doing, the great commission the whole reason why you're still alive and when you got saved, you didn't go straight to heaven, why he still has you right here on earth. It's to save souls, to make disciples, to walk in power, to walk in authority. But you know what messes us up sometimes or why we don't want to submit to the authority? Because that authority doesn't allow us to just do whatever we want. That authority loves us so much that it corrects us, that it disciplines us. The authority of God 
does not line up with your flesh, does not line up with society, and it never will. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him. And he will, he will flee from you. What's going to happen when at this altar or wherever you're at in your seat that you lay your sin down or you lay this situation down? Because remember, the whole focus of tonight is God set me free. So what is going to happen when you actually start following these things, when you actually recognize where you need freedom, where you actually surrender fully to God? You're going to be loved. You're going to be healed. You're going to be delivered. You're going to feel at home. You're going to feel God's peace. You're going to feel God's protection over your life. You're going to feel secure in God's arms. Because sometimes we can focus on all the other things. What if this person sees me at the altar because I serve in this ministry and I'm the leader here? Who cares? You'll never serve God with that mindset, ever. All the works you're doing right now are worth nothing. You got to get to a place where you're saying, I don't even care who's around me. And it actually will trip you out because you come and, and, you, and, and, and you humble yourself and you'll, you'll trip out because some leaders are actually like, they're like, man, I'm proud of you, bro. Good job. And you thought everyone was going to make fun of you or gossip about you. Just step out. You need it. God showed me that tonight is a night for some of us to lay down our secret sin. And then he told me this. He said, Gabriel, they think it's a secret because it's a secret in the physical. But let them know that it's no secret in the spiritual. The demons know. God knows. In the spirit realm, there it is no secret. Whatever you're doing behind closed doors, yes, you could hide it, hide it from your wife. Yes, you could hide it from your husband. Yes, you could hide it from Pastor Marco or from your leader or your mentor. You could hide it from your boss at work. But you cannot hide it from God and you cannot hide it from the, the spirit realm. And the spirit, it's all out there. What is the, the secret that you got going on? What is the secret things that you're engaged in that you're touching? What are the secret things that you're speaking out of your mouth? What's the secret affair that's going on that no one knows about? Who are you sleeping with that is not your wife? It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Sorry guys, someone need to hear that. But what is it? What is it that, that, that secret old mentality from the past that you just, you want to hold on to? The good old days that everyone thinks you move forward and you grew and you're, and you're not the same person, but deep down you know you're the same person. Why would God bring something like this up? Because he loves you, man. God is not bringing this up to shame anybody. God's not bringing this up because he's like, I'm done with you. You're going to serve me or you're going to hell right now. What's your choice? God's bringing this up because he values you. He loves you. He still believes in you. And this is the, the reality. If you're a Christian and you're in secret sin, you're having a hard time loving yourself. You're having a hard time loving yourself. But you know what's amazing? God does not have a hard time loving you because of the condition and the situation that you're in. I mean, like, why would you not receive this? Like, if I was sitting in your seats right now and God gave me this message right now and I, whether I was in whatever deep sin or, or not that deep sin, I'm taking this, like, to the bank. Like, come on, Jesus, I knew you had my back. Thank you. All God is doing is confirming his love for you. He's letting you know that the promise he made to you, he's keeping it. 
that promise to always fight for you, that promise to love you in your worst and in your greatest, he's, pro he's fulfilling that promise right now. You know, I had a brother, we're talking about surrendering everything to God, but I had a brother that I, last week, and as I was, as we were praying, you know, God was working in, 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 and he was getting some freedom. And as we were praying, I, I went up to him and you could just see God is already just moving. But I could tell there's, there's a blockage there. It's like there's something else there. God, what is it that you want to do in his life? And I just told him this. I said, hey, bro. I put my hand. I said, hey, well, just repeat this after me. Say, I love my dad. The moment he said, I love my dad, he broke. And he started crying. And he started getting delivered. He started just literally just coughing up and just getting set free and getting delivered. He was surrendering everything to God in that moment. He's surrendering stuff that people don't know between his, his dad and his relationship. He was surrendering it all to God. My re dysfunctional relationship with my father, I'm going to give it up to you right now, God. The, the abandonment, the hurt, the abuse. And this is what happened. He loved his dad so much. He loved his dad so much. But his dad would never love him back. But you know what happens when you surrender something to God? When you lay something before the Lord and you give it up, no matter how hard it's wounded you, God not only will set you free, but God will do what that father could not do for him. God will fill him up, transform him, not only for his sake, but for generations to generation to generation. That's called generational blessings. The things that you're surrendering have a lot to do with your kids and your grandkids and so on and so on. Do you realize that? Do you realize that life is not just about you? There's people around us that need us to get set free. 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we confess, confess it. Don't let anything hold you back tonight. This is good stuff. This is love. Why would you reject the love of God that's coming before you? Don't, don't let something hold you back. Because what you allow to grow only produces into a demonic harvest in your life. The third thing is repent and renounce. The third thing that we're going to do tonight, we're going to repent and we're going to renounce some things. Acts 3.19, it says, and now you must repent and turn back to God so that your sins will be removed. Doesn't that sound great? When you repent, he's saying, so your sins will be removed. The ones that are weighing you down. He's saying, repent, and I'm going to take them away. But then he says, and so that times of refreshing will stream from the Lord's presence. Times of refreshing will stream to you from the Lord's presence. How many of you guys could honestly say, I, I kind of need some refreshment, some refreshing going on in my life. Do you know that when you really repent and you come before God and surrender and confess, he said, I'll refresh you. There's another guy that I was ministering to on Sunday, and we're praying, and as we're praying and ministering, and, and we're, we, I had some, like all my guys from my Power 12 network, I got all of them together. I said, hey, whoever needs to get demons cast out of them, come tonight. Whoever needs to do everything, let's go. 
Sometimes that's how you have to do it. Get them all together in a room, lock the door. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we're all getting free tonight. <laughs> but as we're worshiping in the, and we use the North Hall room, he comes up and he puts a knife on the pulpit that I was speaking on while we're worshiping. And, and then he goes, puts a big old switchblade and then he goes and he goes on his knees and he's worshiping. And God said, that is repentance. Where is Peter here? Peter. Do you guys know if Peter's here? I can't see you. If you're here, can you wave your hand? I don't know if he came tonight. If, he, if you're here, just walk up here. I want them to see you. But Peter, that's his name, he came and he laid that blade down at the, at, on the pulpit. He can't go back to get it. Why? I took it. I put that in my pocket right away. I put it in my pocket. But he didn't want it back anyways. He laid that down along with his old lifestyle. He laid that, that down along with the old things that he was struggling with. You see, when you actually repent, you put yourself in a position where you're saying, look, I don't even want it. Here, you can have it. And then you turn to God. It just spoke to me so much because God was like, look at that. Like he literally came up, dropped the knife and went to God and got on his knees and started worshiping. Some of us, we got to do something similar to Peter and we got to drop something at this altar right here. We got to lay something down and we got to say, Jesus, I'm going to lay this down, but I'm going to actually truly, I'm repenting right now. This is a, a sign of my repentance. I'm laying it down. I'm turning away to you, God, and I'm not going to be the same ever again. This is our time to repent. After all these three, three things happen, we get set free tonight. We need to now walk in, number one, greater conviction. 1 Thessalonians 1.5, it says, For our gospel came to you not merely in the form of words, but in mighty power infused with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. If you get set free and you get delivered. Do you know that those things are going to try to come back into your life? But God will give you conviction if you allow him to. I remember there was this time where, man, I was probably like 20 years old. And I was praying, God, give me con more conviction. I don't know how or why I got to a place where I started praying that. But it was literally like, I pray for that every day, like if it was like, like protein or something. Like I took it like every day, I'm like, God, give me more conviction, God. Like I see Billy Graham, give me conviction like him. I don't know what I'm asking for, but next thing you know, I'm getting conviction. But it's not just in conviction of things that, that of the world and stuff. But you know what God began to do? He started giving me greater and deeper conviction in obedience to his instructions and to the vision that he was giving me in my life. Some of us can't carry out an instruction of God because you don't have enough conviction. Some of us can't shake up the city and your families. Why? Because you just take it as instruction from Pastor Marco to you. You just, you don't see that God is using a man of God to speak to you because sometimes he can't get through to you. You see, when you're spending time with God, what happens here on this pulpit only confirms what happens in your secret time. When Pastor Marco says, hey, we're going to reach 3,000 families this year in San Bernardino, you're like, oh my gosh, that, that's what God was putting in my heart. I think we're twins, Pastor. God will, do you guys realize that God will download crazy stuff like that to you? Even if you just got saved right today or you're, you're like, I'm not that good of a Christian. Who cares? Stop looking at that stuff. Do you know who the disciples were? Bunch of teenage, crazy teenagers. Like, 
just let God speak to you. Spend time with him. Let him download to you. But this is the thing. Ask God to give you greater conviction. I'm carrying out things that he's telling me to do in my life. Why? I'm convicted. I'm convicted. This has nothing to do with no, no church systems or, or, hey, Pastor Marco told me so or my leader told me so. This is bigger than that. This is God has placed this upon my heart that God has spoken to me. God has shared this vision with me. And I, if I don't do it, that's now between me and God. When we all catch it like that, we'll be a church that dominates and dominates city after city, city after city to Detroit, to Chicago, Las Vegas. Give us all the hard ones. We don't care. Because we got some believers that operate not just vision, but conviction for the vision so they could carry it out and see the fruit and the harvest of the vision. You guys are catching. I'm just, man, I don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be crazy. And I'm just going to say the last two just so you could have them in your notes because we're going to get praying. Worship team, you guys could come out. The second thing is greater accountability. Put yourself in position to be accounted for. Find someone. Find someone tonight. Find someone. Get a mentor. Accountability is one of the wisest things that you could do in your whole life. It's literally one of the wisest things you can do. Number three, you need greater discipleship. If you're going to get set free and, well, you need to get to work right away. There's no time to waste. Don't give the devil a little slot of time. If you don't know the Great Commission, it's in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Go home and check it out. But after you get delivered, get busy and start making disciples right away. When I got saved, I started right away. When Paul got saved in the Bible, you know he just started right away? When I got saved, I started doing a Bible study in my house. started with like one person, two people. I don't really know anything about the Bible. I just knew like Romans um, 10, just that chapter. That's all I read for like literally like four months. Just read it over and over and over. And I don't know, everyone stuck with me for some reason, but... I, didn't, I, I just came new to the church. But in, in literally in a few weeks, that Bible study had over 40-something young adults in it. Consistently. No one knew who I was at the church. I wasn't married to Abriana at that time. I wasn't Pastor Marco's son-in-law. I was just trying to have a Bible study and get to work right away. I didn't want to give myself any time because I knew I was crazy. Don't let up. You know, I went um, biking with Carlos and, and a few guys, um, Chris, all of us, and we, it's the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, literally. We went biking and, and Big Bear, that doesn't even make sense, in a huge mountain, like, bikes that cost, like, too expensive, you have to rent them. And, and, and these guys are like, yeah, Evan's like, yes, you guys are going to love it, man. I'm like, okay. Let's see what happens, right? And I'm telling you, it was a war. Like, I felt like I was going to like a prison fight or something. It was crazy. Somehow I made it without falling out. Christian, Christian fell, but. <laughs> but it was a miracle he didn't break anything because he fell from like up there. <laughs> Promise. But you know what I was thinking that, you know why, why I love that, that sport or whatever? is because God was showing me how it could work in my spiritual life and how it could work in leadership. What he was showing me is when you're riding this bike, you can't let up for a second. You let up for just a second. You get comfortable. You start to sit down on your bike. You start to just chill. You could go off of a like 45 foot cliff, like that easy. They don't have rails or anything. I don't know why they don't, but. And he was showing me in the same way, us believers in our walk, we have to know you cannot let up, not one little bit. You can't let up in your life every second, every minute. You And don't wait for everyone else to tell you or coach you. How about you start practicing coaching yourself too? That will just boost that growth in your life. Let's all stand up. Give Jesus a hand if you guys really grabbed something tonight.
this is where we apply everything we just learned. If that message really, you feel like that message was for you and God wants to set you free of some things tonight, can you just join me up here in the altar right now? Just make your way up here to the front. We mean business. We're going to get healed. We're going to get delivered. We're going to get set free. We're going to get reborn. We're going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're going to break the chains of the enemy. Those that were struggling with suicide, I speak life over you right now. You're going to love your life with Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep it going, keep it going. We're here to get delivered. We're here to get set free. We're here to say, Jesus, set me free. Repeat after me, say, Jesus, set me free. He's setting us free. After you get set free, number one thing, you need to find someone to disciple you. Find someone to mentor you. You know, this life that Jesus is offering you tonight, this love that Jesus is offering you tonight, It's for you. Someone just came and dropped this, a lighter, a lighter. Come on, praise Jesus. You don't know what they were lighting with this, but I'll tell you this much. They're saying, I'm not lighting it anymore. I'm giving that up to Jesus. This could have been something that they were bound to for years or for generations. You know, Jesus, he's here not just to set you free, but he's, he wants a relationship with you so, so bad. And some of us, we've given our hearts to so many other people. We've, we've given our hearts to so many other relationships. Tonight is your night to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Tonight is your night to be forgiven of your sins. And if you're saying tonight, I realize that I'm a sinner. I'll be honest with you, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. But I want to be forgiven of my sin. I want to be set free from the addictions that I'm on, from the torment in my life, from the hurt that I'm going, to, going through. I want Jesus tonight. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to give him everything that I am. If you want to enter into a relationship with this Jesus that transformed my life, that transformed every one of their lives, that transformed Pastor Marco's life, that transformed all these altar workers' lives and all these other leaders and, and, and Christians that are out here among you. If you want that relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, would you just raise up your hand right now? Raise your hand, awesome, look at this. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Remember, we're, we're getting crazy for Jesus, we're not scared. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, 
34, 35. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise. This is what Christianity is about. This is what Jesus is about. What did he tell the disciples? We're going to be fishermen of people. I'm here to serve you. All of, all of us here, we're here to serve you. Picture us with the apron on. That's what we're here for. We're here to love you. We're here to help you through these things, these challenges. We're to help you in this walk. But if you raise your hand, I want you to come up here, come to the front, come to the front. Can we put them on stage? Let's, let's put them on stage. Can we bring them on stage? If you're receiving Jesus Christ right now and you're saying you're gonna surrender to Jesus, I want you to come up on stage right now. Help them make their way up. Help them make their way up. You know what we're going to do right here? We're going to get you saved, delivered, but also you're going to get in a, in a discipleship group from here. Are we bringing them up? Bring them up. Bring them up. If you raise your hand, come up here. Praise God. Go ahead and hang out right over here. There's some more out there. Come up here. We ain't playing when your life is on the line. We, ain't, we don't care if it's 837, 937, 1037. We got some more people. I'm just so thankful that Man, do you guys see that everyone at this, all, this altar here, this is somebody's son, this is somebody's daughter, this could be your son or your daughter, this could be your, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your grandma, your grandpa. This is the church. This is how we operate. Not just in this building, but outside of this building. Everybody here that's receiving Jesus Christ. If you guys, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you that tonight... You chased me down. You showed me tonight that I'm not invisible, that you see me, that you love me. You showed me tonight that I'm worth it. And I just ask you, Jesus, would you please forgive me of all my sins? I let it all go. I repent and I renounce all sin in my life. Holy Spirit, fill me up right now. Holy Spirit, transform me. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Make some noise for Jesus. What we're gonna do right now, if you're a P12 leader, you're gonna make your way up here to the stage at some point. Cause we need to help these people. We need to make sure they get discipled. We're gonna finish with the song and then we have people that are gonna pray with you. 
because we're going to start getting some freedom and some deliverance. Some people are already getting delivered right now. All right? Let's go ahead and let's go into that song. Love you guys. All, if you're a P12 leader, can make your way up here. <laughs> 